Hello friends and welcome to Omni Geometry. My name is Dylan and today in this tutorial we'll be creating the vector equilibrium cube octahedron and the 64 tetrahedron grid. Let's get into it. So to start off we're just going to make the simple cube octahedron. So for this, we begin with a simple triangle. We're going to copy that, copy that layer, and we're going to make a hexagon. So I just need to make sure the radiuses are correct on these. So we're going to do 60. Uh, the radius of the square uh, of the hexagonal form is actually 104 if uh, we've got a 60 radius triangle in the middle. This needs to be rotated 90 degrees. There we go. So what I love about this is uh, this symbol actually uh, comes up in the liquid crystals modality which I work with. Let me continue on. So we're simply going to copy this hexagon and we're going to, going to work with the star radius and the star radius needs to be 60. There we go. So that's actually a very simple, quick way to get the cube octahedron. But if you see these lines here, they would not be visible in a you know, a three-dimensional solid-looking cube octahedron. And I'll get into that more later in the video. But what I'm going to do now is just create the cube octahedron in its translucent form. So we can see the front and the back of the three-dimensional shape. So I'm just going to copy that triangle and flip it over. 180 degrees. Look at that, that's starting to look really nice there. So this is how it would be without connecting to the center point at the middle of this form. So it would be as if uh, these triangles had more of a solid face. In fact, if we fill this in, let's see what it looks like. Make sure that fill is on black, fill shape. That did not work, gotta bring it up one. There we go. So there you can sort of sort of see that going on. I'll remove that again. So now what I'm going to do is simply select everything by pressing space and turn on Origio lines. There we go. So now all of those uh, vertices are connected to the center point. And we get that. Uh, yeah, that beautiful form. It's translucent and it connects to the center point. So, this form is necessary to complete the 64 tetrahedron grid. So, I'm going to leave it as it is right now, but I'm going to hide it and let's work on that grid. Again, we need to make sure that that radius is the same. Starting at 60, uh, we want a Rigio lines on. Uh, actually, now if I remember correctly, I'm going to halve the radius to 30. Yes, that's better. And I'm going to turn recursion up. So we're going to go up to three. Yes. I will keep the line weight on fixed. There we go. So it's pretty much nearly done. I'm just going to copy this and flip it so we actually get that tetrahedron shape. So it's that simple to make the 64 grid, but it's not quite 
the complete form yet. The complete form is when we add this one on because it has that uh, hexagonal shape. So if we make those visible, there we go. That's it, the 64 tetrahedral grid. Uh, some people might like to uh, add points. So using space to select all of those and just putting on points and base points. Doesn't look quite right, but that's because the point radius is really high. So we're going to make the point radius absolute and reduce it down. So I'm going to do a three. Uh, we want to fill the points as well. There you go. That might be what you're looking to create. So I'm actually going to go back a, back a few steps here and show you some things that we can do with just the cube octahedron with that quite simple geometry. So I'm going to remove the points on all of those and I'm going to hide that grid. So we've gone back to the cube octahedron. So if we want to make this look a little bit more 3D, then we're going to need to add a masking layer, which is going to uh, hide some of the lines at the back here so we can get a nice solid three-dimensional looking shape. Now to do so, uh, I think the layer needs to go here. So it, this first tetrahedron must be on top, the rest can be below. So let's add a layer. Now, let's see, I think it was no recursion. Make sure that radius is at 60. For now, that will need to be changed. Uh, going to increase the line weight. Now I had it quite thick before, so I'm actually going to start with 100. Woo, that's big. Make that fixed and make the line color black to match with the background. Uh, I'll make it a little bit lighter so you can sort of see what we're doing with the shape there. Okay. Back in form, we're going to rotate it because it's going to be the lines in those squares and those rectangles back there that we want to hide. Now with star on, star radius, we actually want to have at zero, which creates quite an interesting form. It's become square when it has a very thick line weight. We get this square here and that's what we're going to use to hide those lines. Now to bring that square out a little bit more, uh, what are we going to do? Yeah, we're just going to increase the radius. So I do just want to make a little bit of a note on making this cube octahedron before we continue on with that. There was quite a specific reason that with a radius of 60 as our base, that these forms needed to be 104. I tried it with 120, which is double the radius, but what was happening is that these rectangles were not uniform. They were more a, of a trapezium shape. So this line was shorter than this line at 120. Look, I'll even demonstrate it. So I'll highlight those, make these 120. And I'll also need to change the line radius back to 60 to make sure it joins those points as so. And yes, you can see here that, yeah, this line a little bit shorter than this one that makes those this sort of diagonal. And then that simply won't work with the masking layer. And it's not the true geometric form of the vector equilibrium. It, for some reason, requires in this radius 104 when our base is 60. That's just what the ratio is. So 
put it back. Now we've got the proper rectangles. Now this masking layer, we know it will work. Okay, so increasing the radius of this one here to bring it up. Now, in my tests, I used 89. That's pretty much it. I think I used 89.5 to just, just touch that line. Uh, you know, you can edit that to your, to your needs. Uh, and I also want to widen those li that line weight just a little bit to cover that part. So if I remember correctly, 103 should be pretty much perfect. Yep, might be a little bit imperfect there, but for our needs today, this is sufficient. So there we go. Uh, I'll turn Origio lines off of this one. In fact, I'll turn them off of all of these for now. This masking layer, I'm gonna make it fully black. There we go. So that is what a solid cube octahedron would look like. And if we reduce the opacity of this masking layer, then we can play around with that translucent look to it. So there you go, we'll keep it that much translucent. And you can beautifully see the, the back portion of this three-dimensional form. And simply by selecting those, not the masking layer, and turning on Origio lines, ah, there we go. Now it's connected, that vector equilibrium. Great, well, that's all for today. I hope you've enjoyed. And much love.